Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of The Oldish TV. As always, I'm your host. My name is Karen, and I'm happy to welcome you here today. If you are new to us, a special welcome, and I hope that you enjoy the content. You have joined us on a day when we're talking about a bit of a taboo subject, but it shouldn't be taboo, should it? No, we're talking about sex and sexuality today. Now, it may come as no surprise to you that I do keep an eye on the articles that people read on theoldish.com. Let me just scroll that for you so you know where you can find these articles. And if I look at the articles that have been read over the last quarter, so the last three months, a lot of you are reading articles having to do with sex and sexuality. Titles like Friends with Benefits After 50, Love, Sex, and Older Adults. Cosmetic whitening for older adults. Okay, so you want to look good too. No surprise. Satisfying sex after 70, absolutely, is another title. Older adults more likely to have extramarital sex. You get the drift. Whether it's because we've been on lockdown or because the warmer weather is having an effect on us or we're feeling a bit more sure of ourselves or just could be a desire to know more, these articles are searched quite a bit. Now, it's not always like that, but because you were searching for those articles so much this quarter, I definitely wanted to make sure that we address that at the Oldish TV. If you have comments, put them in the, the comments below and I will see them. I'm pointing to the side because that's where I see them pop up and we can see them on screen, but I will understand if you want to be a bit shy and keep your thoughts to yourself. That's okay too. I want to get um, a look at some of the survey data so that we get some baselines about what studies are telling us about older adults and sexuality. Back in the day, the prevailing thinking was that we got to a certain age and it was time to hang that up. Time for separate beds or separate bedrooms. If you have adult children and you ask them, when they were teenagers, they probably thought 40 was kind of the cutoff for that. Surprise, goes a lot later than that. The data says this, a majority of AARP members 45 and older say that a satisfying sexual relationship is important to quality of life. In the 60 to 70 age group, and hang on to this statistic because we're gonna talk about it later, 46% of men and 38% of women say they are having sex at least once a week. The National Council on Aging found that almost 50% of Americans 60 and over have sex at least once a month. Duke University tells us that 20% of people over 65 are having better sex than ever before in their entire lives. That makes a lot of sense. The kids are gone. They've got the time. If they're retired, makes a ton of sense. They've got the whole house to themselves. Why not? A uh, study, oh, here's a good one. A study published in the Annals of Internal Medicine says one in 10 men over the age of 90, 90 are reporting that they still have a sex life. Dr. Bortz, a professor at Stanford Medical School, says the data is strong everywhere. Quote, people that have sex live longer. Married people live longer. People need people. The more intimate the connection, the more powerful the effects, end quote. So for those who wish to have sex, a healthy sex life is a positive part of life. But there are problems caused by ageism and some of those ageism attitudes come from other people. Sometimes they come from ourselves, thinking about ourselves. Adult children, not wanting to think of their parents as sexual beings may make offhand comments that make their parents feel less than. Doctors make assumptions about the lives of their older patients and may not think to include sexuality in regular discussions. If you look on TV, now granted there are more programs about older people and they are starting to address more issues around sexuality in older people, but really that seems to be something that is reserved for younger generations. There are also problems caused by various medications that make exercising sexual feelings quite challenging at times. Issues like blood circulation, hypertension, diabetes, various treatments for progressive conditions, arthritis, incontinence, chronic pain, even dementia 
the list goes on and on and on, but these things can all affect a healthy sexual life. There are new treatments though, and they can overcome a variety of challenges caused by medications and hormones and other physiological changes that happen as we age. Hormones in women at menopause, brings a nosedive for estrogen and androgens, while in men, they see the same plunge for testosterone and estrogen. But sadly, only a fraction of the people who recognize these problems actually take action and go and seek help. So the help is there. I think we just have to get over ourselves and be comfortable talking about it. Another problem is referred to as the partner gap. This is something that mostly affects women as the majority of older women are adults without partners. They tend to live longer. And then there's the issue of healthy older men who tend to partner up with younger women, those scoundrels. Widowed, divorced, or single women report that finding a partner is difficult. Friends with benefits. Yes, we have an article about that on the oldish as well. And it's becoming a more popular thing for people to do. Good buddies you've known all your life. Maybe you're both widowed. You don't want to take on the obligations of marriage, but you want the fun. And that makes sense. Also, older women are judged to a different set of standards than older men. And that can have an impact on how we think about ourselves and our, our sexuality and seeing ourselves as sexual beings. It's rough to get to an age where you have all kinds of confidence, you know what you're doing, you've got extra time on your hands, but you want that 20-year-old body back, the one that you probably didn't appreciate too much when you were 20. Yeah, bodies change, and sometimes people don't feel as comfortable with skin that has changed or moved from where it used to be. Muscle tone has lessened. White hair that can be covered in the drapes can't always be covered in the carpet, if you get my drip. There was a show about that on Sex in the City. You can look it up. Apparently it's not a good thing to try. But especially when new partners are involved, we feel less than, diminished, shy. If you have a new partner or you're thinking about it, remember also STDs are still a thing. In fact, they are a growing thing with older adults who think that that's a thing for younger people to be worried about. Guess what? It's also a thing for older adults to be worried about. So, you know, if you have, oh, I'm just closing a program here that's popping up. If you have a new partner, remember condoms. Very important. You've got to protect your health. And during this time of COVID, a lot of advice and information has been coming at us from all directions. There has been a bit of advice about sexuality as well including some ridiculous stuff about continuing to wear masks and face-to-face -face sex. You know, sometimes people just go a little too far. But regardless, the prevailing advice for singles has been to reacquaint yourself with masturbation. Never hurts to know your body a little bit better either. Whatever you choose, make sure you have that stash of lubrication. Make sure you have a stash of condoms. And make sure your mind is ticking to the positive side of things. And then go for it. Absolutely go for it. Now, remember that previous statistic that I told you to hang on to? I'll tell you again. In the 60 to 70-year-old age range, 46% of men and 38% of women had sex at least once, once a week. Those numbers also mean that in the 60 to 70 age range, 54% of men and 62% of women are not having sex once a week. So intimacy can mean more than just sex. Remember that and don't get intimidated by survey data or studies. Intimacy can mean having deep conversations with your partner, snuggled up on the couch, having a glass of wine, talking about your children, your grandchildren, your day, your plans, whatever. While it's fine to look at statistics or listen to the bravado of acquaintances, and there's a lot of that, it's important to remember that normal is whatever is normal for you, not for everybody else. Don't try to keep up with the Joneses. 
You are the Joneses. Keep up with what you want. If you aren't content, then the desire to fix whatever is wrong or missing in your life is on you. Fix it or don't, but it's up to you. Whether you are having screaming wall bashing sex that make your children go pale, or you prefer to have a quieter kind of intimacy, all that matters is that you and your partner are content. So I will once again scroll that overlay so you know where to find these articles. And here we go. Covilla, thank you for joining today, my dear, and I hope you are well also. We are having a great time over here. And I see that I've got some thumbs up from people on this topic. I understand if you're a little bit shy to actually comment on sex and sexuality, feel free to DM me if you want to. It's fine, but I really don't want the details. <laughs> I would just like to really know if you are one of the ones reading the articles and if you are a person who is content and comfortable. Because I, I think a lot of people think they've got to be really happy or living up to somebody else's standards, and that is just not the case. There's a lot to be said for contentment, and I hope that you will all find yourself content with whatever choices you make in life. I would also like to invite you to join us again next Wednesday at 12 noon for another edition of The Oldish TV. And until then, look after yourselves, take care of one another, and remember that it does take a village to age a senior. Be well. Bye, everybody.